Hello, everybody. I'm Kristen. And I'm Rachel. And this is So I'm Watching Gilmore Girls, Season 1, Episode 14, That Damn Donna Reed. Okay. You seem to be having a lot of problems, so I'm going to let you go first. first Are we all, starting at the end? Yeah. Okay. We're starting with Christopher. This was Christopher's introduction. No one told me he was going to be so hot. Oh, David Sutcliffe is hot. I'm having problems. He, he's hot. I'm having problems. Okay. He has to be hot because he has to be like a viable romantic rival for Luke. Ugh. And also, they have history and a child together. I'm so mad. Yeah. Because it's like, I know I'm going to be so mad. I'm already so mad! Because where are you? Like, your parents just bought a place in Connecticut, and then you're just like, vroom, vroom, hey, yeah. and, like, take my helmet off, and this is the first we're seeing of you. Well, okay, so he's in California currently working for a startup. Okay. Yeah. I'll take it back. Whatever. Yeah. But I'm upset. Well, so in that episode with not the Christmas party, but Rory's birthday party. Yes. When that woman came up to Mitzi or whatever, came up to her and was oh, like... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. How often do you, like, blah, 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 whatever. And she was like, well, you know, he calls on, like, birthdays and holidays. And, you know, we see him when he's in town. But why are you not calling it once a week? It's because he's hot and he can get away with things like that. I'm so mad. I'm so mad. I'm so interested to see how you feel going forward. <sighs> but I did tell you a couple episodes ago... Because Max and Lorelai had to break up, and you were like, why? And I was so, like, well... So Christopher can come to town? Because Lorelai has to be single when Christopher's in town. So... I don't... I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah, I'm just saying, though. I just... The show is a trip, man. Yeah. I like it so much. So... Because it's... it's I'm, I'm going on journeys. Yeah. And I also like that this was a very paint-heavy episode, and I look like I'm wearing a painter's jumpsuit. You kind of do. <laughs> yeah. I like how like that worked it. out. That's such a good jumpsuit. I like it so much. It's from Lucy and Yak. They are great. They are women-owned from the UK, and you should definitely check them out. To jump back to the beginning of this episode. Yes. Dean comes over for a movie night. Mm hmm And, okay, the thing I like the most about this scene is that he has brought himself a salad. And he is, like, talking he, about no, it. he brought it for everybody, well, and they looked at him with yeah. daggers, and they <laughs> so, were like, what is this abomination yeah. that you've brought into this household? Yeah. But those are kind of the quirks that I do like about Dean, where it's like, he can, like, eat with them, and he frequently does, mm -hmm. but it's like, he also gives, like, a little bit of a shit, and so he's like, I'll eat this salad, like... And you know what's so funny? When he came into the scene and sat down and handed the box of pizza to Lorelai... Yeah. Their chemistry is so stupid. I was like, why is Rory in the room? It's, yeah. Rory should leave. Okay. It's so weird. So I mentioned it once before, or we, we talked about it once before, maybe in the episode where they, either right after the dance. It was probably when Lorelai was giving him what for. Yeah. It was like one or two times, but it's like, they have like a weirdly electric chemistry yeah. with yeah. each other that I'm like, again, with, with Lauren Graham, I'm like... Yeah, it's called chemistry. I have it with everyone. Mm -hmm. But it also is like, but stop having it with the guy who's supposed to be your daughter's boyfriend. Yes! Like, it's really weird. And I, I, was, I just laugh because it's like, I think it's just Lauren Graham. Like, yeah, it, I, is. And, it is. And just, I mean, mazel. Yeah. What a talent to have. It's amazing. But it just... Felt... She also writes a decent novel. Lauren Graham does? Yeah. What did she write? What's her It's novel? called... Uh, Someday, maybe someday, I think. Okay. And it's like about a young actress trying to make it in New York. Oh. It was darling. I, I think I think she's written another one since then. And she's also written a memoir. Good for her. She's pretty good at it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yes to the electrochemistry. I, I agree. And it it maintains. Oh, I don't doubt it. Then you can't turn it off. Yeah. They're making me do the Italian hands. It's I can't. Ridiculous. It's no, it, it, but it was just so weird for poor Alexis Bledel, where I was just like, you, yeah. could, you could just leave. Okay, so there's something else in this episode I've been meaning to bring up, but I haven't noticed a like a good or like specific place to bring it up. But like, especially at the end of this episode, right before Christopher arrives and uh -huh. they're walking down the sidewalk and Lorelai's got her arm around her and she's talking about how maybe she has scurvy, mm -hmm. so she like wants fruit or whatever. 
that's something that I actually love so much. It's like a little behind the scenes thing where like this was Alexis Bledel's first working acting mm -hmm. job and she didn't know how to like hit a mark. Oh. So especially in season one, a lot of the time when Lorelai has her arm around her, it's because Lauren Graham was like helping her. guide oh, Alexis Bledel. So cute. That's great. I love it. And I thought this was an okay time to bring it up because yeah. they do have that scene at the end. And um, you mentioned, like, poor Alexis Bledel. And I was like, yeah. she is also fresh to this. So yeah. it's like... She... No, and the seams don't show. Like, yeah, she's no. doing a great job. Well, I also will say, and I think I've said it before, <laughs> this Rory does not exist for the whole series. Oh, I figured as much. She, like, gets weird. Mm -hmm. Some choices happen in season four. She gets a little weird. Yes. Some stuff. So I, like... Yeah. Do you know stuff? I I know things. Okay. I don't I don't know things like I did for Teen Wolf. Like okay. I don't know specific details. I just I have a nebulous idea of things that happen. Okay. And she makes choices that not everyone agrees with and it's extremely sure. polarizing. Yeah, but okay. I don't I don't have a very clear idea of what those are. Okay. We're gonna get into a very justice for X character okay. moment at the end of season four, or beginning of season five. Okay. Okay. So what they're watching at the beginning when they're having this like night in together is the Donna Reed show. So because I already knew where this episode was going and because I I went like mini viral on Twitter a handful of years ago because Donald Trump said something bullshit about Donna Reed and I was like Actually, Donna Reed was, like, one of the early first original television producers, and I learned it from this show, mm -hmm. and that's not something that Amy Sherman Palladino was going to lie about. Right. Um, and people went fucking bananas. In a good way? No. Oh, no! <laughs> to the point where I had, like, multiple men being like, She's not credited as a producer anyway. And I was like, yeah, that's why I said uncredited in my original post. It was horrible. It was truly horrible. So that is, don't gulp the rest of your Lisa Vanderpump wine. It's delicious. <laughs> Y'all motherfuckers make me drink. We bought, okay. <laughs> as mentioned in last week's episode today, we finished watching all 10 seasons of Vanderpump Rules for me. I was watching it for the first time ever, and so to celebrate, Rachel went out and bought the last bottle of Vanderpump Rosé that they had at Total Wine so that we could celebrate. So, cheers. Cheers! You guys should do it, too. It's so fun. It's actually bomb. Mm -hmm. If you're into rosé, it's a bomb rosé. And I'll, I was mostly talking about the yeah. show, but also but the also, wine, the also wine the is ex very, very good. It's a Costa Provence. It's very, very good. All um, episodes of the show are on Peacock. Yes, they are. It's, it's good. It's a lot. It's mm -hmm. fantastic. So, anyway, they're watching Donna Reed, and Rory and Lorelai are mercilessly mocking it for, like, Donna Reed being, like, the perfect 50s housewife. Mm -hmm. And Dean, this is, mark it on your calendars now, the last time I'm going to agree with Dean. For the... September 1st, 8.43 <laughs> p.m. For the entirety of the series, I believe this is the last time I fully agree with Dean. because. He doesn't say it right, but in my opinion, until the end of the episode, when Rory does all, or towards the end of the episode, when Rory does all the research, Dean is being more of a feminist than they are in this episode. Yeah. Because they are like, that is, Donna Reed is the wrong way to be a woman. Right. Is what they're saying and <laughs> they're pointing be, at. They're being the bad feminist. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. It was 2001. I understand the place we were at. We were very well, raw, raw girl power. And that's like the whole thing. Like I, so side tangent, I am having to dress up as a Barbie for a work thing. And so I am dressing up as Teen Talk Barbie, which was a 1991 Barbie doll that they discontinued because one of the things that she said was math class is tough. Math class is tough, yes. bitch. <laughs> I was on the phone with my cousin who was trying to help her son do math. And it, she had to look at two different apps to figure out why she got the wrong answer. We ended up figuring out, but whatever. But so the reason why is because the feminists got together and were the feminists at the time, whatever, were like, oh, this is terrible. Why, you know, that's not fair for women in STEM. It's like yep. you're you're saying the wrong thing that like girls are pretty and shouldn't know math or whatever. And it's like, it's not you're doing it wrong. It's not you're that going, you're you're overcorrecting. It's not that serious and you're going too hard. Right. It, as is my thing. Right. And so 
shows like that, just like how we were having that conversation about, like, you have to look at ugly things in media to yeah. kind of, like, understand it. That was not... this. Mm, the Donna Reed show and those examples of women very much were, like, a showing of how it should be. Sure. So it was, like, a little bit of negative messaging, also messaging that wasn't exactly real. But, but it's also so of the time. Right. That, like, you can't really, you can't really discount that. It, and you also, I mean, you have to get so deep into, like, American history because mm -hmm. you have to be, like, this was a post-war. Yep. Like, American values. Like, like, they had to pump back out oh, to make it yeah. look more beautiful. Yeah. And then, like, but, you know. And also to make the women, re like, feel okay going back to the kitchen. Back home. Yes. hundred like, percent. There's so much more to it. And the fact that, look, you don't have to work. Yeah. Your, your husband does everything for you. So you could stay yeah. at home and make things feel very beautiful. Don't, very don't worry, darling. Yes. Um, But the fact that, like, poor 16, and again, the only time you'll hear me say this, poor 16-year-old Dean doesn't know how to vocalize you should like some women like to do that i would kill kill to be a stay-at-home wife and see i can't imagine a fresher hell than having to do that oh yeah sounds amazing <laughs> all i want to do is cook three square meals a day no, and i just I don't have time i would have lived at her i do live at her house but i'm like you are she you made a titty hot, hot like pot pie tonight. i made a chicken pot pie tonight. <laughs> you would be will's sister wife i am we <laughs> talked about this i am your sister husband sure yes more than his sister wife sure yeah no yeah. i am i am like a sister spouse you, you give me a lot more emotional support than you yeah. than you give him yeah um, i am for hire if you need a sister husband for hire no, then I, what about me but they could pay me okay. and then i could give you money oh all right yeah let's do that <laughs> do that she's for sale yeah <laughs> um no so that basically f for me i'm feeling very weird because also th the episode of angel that came out this week on our buffy podcast oh uh, yeah when you guys came another yeah. buffy podcast check it out if you're interested it's amazing you guys should um i really was defensive of angel and mm -hmm. i was like buffy is being a total asshole in this she was. episode she totally she, it is it was because they are when they are on each other's shows, yeah. they are the absolute worst versions of themselves. Well, it's okay, but again, I think it's, I think it's worse when Buffy's on Angel mm -hmm. because, like, Angel originated on Buffy. Yeah, but it's like the Angel people aren't watching Buffy, mm -hmm. so they don't know how to write her. So it's like she just arrives and does whatever they need her to, but it's so out of character. Men don't know how to write a complicated woman. Well, I, mean, I would, <laughs> I would argue that because a lot of men. That wrote on that show did yeah. just but, not but Kate. Joss Whedon. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, we can't get into oh, a we don't have time. Can't get into an angel conversation. <laughs> but I understand what you mean because, like Dean, I still got mad at Dean, but like I don't. It's just because he didn't have the word. He didn't have the language to explain what he meant. Mm -hmm. And so even later, when he and Rory get in the fight, when he meets her at the bus, mm -hmm. and he's like, my mom cooks dinner for my dad. Like, before she had to go to work, she cooked dinner for my dad every night. Yeah. That's the reality he grew up with. And that's so foreign to Rory, who grew up with Lorelai, mm -hmm. who was is very a rah-rah girl power feminist, which is like, you can't discount that. It is a type of feminism that we need. Mm -hmm. And she also... She is raising Rory in such a way that she will not need a man right. in her life. And I think that's admirable because I don't think women should... You shouldn't need a man. No. You should want to... You should be like Cher. I love men. I think men are the coolest. I don't need a man. Yeah. I, I am the rich man. I am the rich man. Yeah. That is how women should be. You mm -hmm. should want to want your partner. Yeah. Because it goes for women, too. There's There's toxic... Lesbians out oh, there too. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ. But, but no, because like I, I probably on the spectrum. Like I definitely am a little bit more like I don't want to stay at home. I don't yeah. want to cook whatever. But when I have been in, I am a lover and I am a carer and yeah. I am a doer. So regardless if it's romantic or whatever, if there is a way that I can do and care and love on you yeah. and it looks a little bit more domestic, yeah. I will do it. Yeah. Like, I actively have to not fold the laundry because it's like, I like to do it and I know it will help, but I'm not gonna. It's okay. It, it doesn't but... help when you fold my towels because you and Will do it like crazy people. That's the way we were taught. It's wrong. We're insane. Whatever. I'm gonna but get, anyway. Okay, for the next episode, so tune in next week because I'm gonna get a towel in here for the next episode. I'm gonna show you how she folds it and how I fold it and we're gonna take a fucking poll. <laughs> I want to know. I want to know what you think about <laughs> towel folding. Because I'm right. I know I'm right. We should not have had a bottle of Vanderpump Rosé before we did this. We have a whole other episode of D9 too. You guys want to make sure.
make sure you come back for the second episode. Yeah. <laughs> so it's going to be real good. But but all this to say, like, I do understand, but I also don't. There's still something about it that just feels kind of gross because is Dean's Dean's mom also works. So she does still, now. Yes. Yeah. But so she is still cooking on the food on Saturdays. Yeah. Does Dean's mom like that? Or is it an additional level of labor that his mother is we, having to do because of that? We don't so, get into that. I don't know that we ever meet Dean's so, mom. We so, meet Dean's little sister, but I don't think we ever meet his but parents. So when he hits Rory with the sensitive, you're being sensitive. Yeah. That's where I was like, no, record scratch. Sure. Like, I, I take it. I can't At least even... he didn't say hysterical. No, yeah. sensitive is one way street. It is. It is. It's so, on the way. It's on so the way. So it's like he, she, I guess, I don't know. It's also, I think she was trying to take ownership. Like, this is our thing. And then you're being weird about it. Yeah. Like, it, it, we're poking fun, but we also love it. Yeah. And like, we do appreciate these things about Donna Reed and what she was and who she was. Well, but, okay. But they didn't until Rory did true. that research. Right. Which it is amazing. Like, Donna Reed actually, first of all, she's the female lead in It's a Wonderful Life. Mm -hmm. That movie's incredible. Her character is incredible. Yep. Lasso Me the Moon is the most romantic scene in almost any movie ever. Mm -hmm. It's adorable. Jimmy Stewart, never better looking. Yep. The whole nine yards. So, yeah. I think the Donna Reed thing, I think the way it wraps up is kind of a delight. The fact that Rory yeah. does all that research and then she's like, I actually get it now. Mm -hmm. And I'm like this, but it also is like, I'm going to put on this costume sometimes. Mm -hmm. Because even if you don't want to do that kind of thing all the time, there is sort of something kind of like, especially if you're the type of woman like Lorelai and like Rory, there's something that's like almost kind of sub subversive about putting on that costume and like, being domestic and subservient to, like, a man, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know. There's something I'm kind of no, there for. I'm, I'm Everyone's getting a real there. glimpse inside me right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I like I like that you use that turn of phrase as well. <laughs> not sure I but like no, it. I, but I think what it was great, though, was that once Dean got it, he was kind of like, no, I don't like it. And he, and he was like, let me help you. Yeah. And she was like, nope, you're a man. You're, you yeah. can't help for 15 more years. And he was like, well, then I'm going to do man's work. I kind of like how they and, like both played into it. It yeah. was, it ended up being really cute because at the beginning I could feel you cringing. And I was like, no, no. I was like, just let it happen. Like mm -hmm. this episode, this episode turns out cute. And like, she has the little orangey gingham dress mm -hmm. and pearls and, and a little headband. And... I mean, it was adorable. Yeah. So I think that's kind of all I have to say about the, like, Donna Reed, Dean, and, yeah. and Rory thing. So moving on, Taylor is trying to get Luke to spruce up the diner. Basically, he literally just wants a coat of paint because yeah. it's, like, faded and it's old and it has him to paint it since the roof caved in when it was still a hardware store that his dad was running. So Lorelai basically convinces Luke to do it, to at least talk about colors. Mm -hmm. And then I actually do kind of love all the different color palettes she puts together. Yeah. And is like, ooh, like a Tuscan villa. And he's like, I'd go to Italy if I wanted a Tuscan villa. And like, Eng English countryside. And then Taylor is like, this is beautiful. And she's like, fuck. And so she like takes the paint chips off the wall. And they obviously end up going with like, basically the same color scheme, just, you know, fresh More and up. orange. Yeah. yeah. Well, like orange trim and green walls. Yeah. And it actually, I think they do do it and it looks the same it's just like nicer so that is their basically their storyline this whole episode you have thoughts you're mad you're still mad i just why do you do this to me okay i almost said something to you out there i'm gonna say it now i mean you said you wanted to keep it because apparently my reaction is gonna be good yes okay so you know and spoiler alert if you don't but i assume you're watching this because you've seen the whole show already they do end up together. Mm -hmm. Before they end up together for good, both of them get married and divorced to other people. <laughs> Shaky. Yeah. What? Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> Luke's happens a lot sooner. Why? Yeah. I'm so, uh, it, oh my god, the energy yeah. is flowing through my body. Okay, 
So what? Okay. So we'll we'll set up the rest of the episode. Basically, um, Rory also has to take care of a chiclet <laughs> for the whole for the episode. What a drive-by <laughs> comment! Just about to talk about Stella the chick. Well, I can't keep talking about her. I'll give stuff away. <laughs> I feel like I hurt her. <laughs> You know who hurt me is Amy Sherman yeah. Palladino. It's a problem. Uh, oh my god! Speaking of Amy Sherman Palladino, do you know um, what other thing that we love that Michael Zegan is in? What? Brooklyn. Oh. He plays one of the brothers. One love of her that. husband's brothers. Yeah, love that. Yeah. I am devastated. Okay, I'm, so I'm gonna move on to Stella the okay. Chicklet. Okay, so. Basically, Rory has to take care of a chiclet for the week, or for the month, I guess, but we never see it again. Also, we didn't mention that the reason that she was able to dress up and do Donna Reed is because she's house-sitting for Maury and Babette. Because they got a new kitten named Apricot. So cute. So fresh. Just a little stupid orange boy cat. So cute. So tiny. So, this chiclet, Lorelai has to watch it for the evening, and so she's gone to look at paint chips with Luke, and she comes back, and Stella is not in her cage anymore. So she immediately calls Luke. I buy that she doesn't realize what she's doing. Oh, 100%. That it was just, he, he was the last person I was with, so he's the person I thought of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she's like me. She's, if you're not right in front of her, she forgets you exist. <laughs> oh, a goldfish. <laughs> okay, she's a goldfish. So um, she calls Luke to help her find the chick. He comes over and he makes a comment that says, oh, you actually have a chick loose in your house. And so she asks him, she's like, what did you mean by that? And he sort of brushes it off and she lets it go. But then she brings it up to Suki and Suki is like, yeah, of course he. Well, because you also left out the part that they're like walking around the diner, of course, talking about the paint chips and he's going down memory lane and talking about like how his dad really loved the place. And then he like wrote an order yep. on I the love side of the counter. He's like, yeah. I don't remember where it is. And then when they finally get there, it was like, hammer! Like, <laughs> <laughs> he is writing. Yeah. But then they are like, they are both on all fours. He could just shift backwards and then they're me- immediately in doggy style. But then he's like, they were like, but he was definitely all up in her hair. Yeah, and like staring at her yeah. in a very romantic way. And then she was like, okay, gotta go, bye. And then, so the fact that she calls him and be like, there's a chick in my house, immediately he's gonna be like, no, that is like, that is That's a booty call. code. So when she's talking to Suki about it, uh, Suki is like, yeah. Duh, babe. He obviously thought that was a booty call. Like, I don't know what you're what you're thinking of. The first time Jackson and I had sex, I told him there was a bat in my attic, and she, and we like looked for the bat, and then we split a bottle of wine, and then like, you know, and so, but Lorelai is just like so obtuse about, like deliberately obtuse about it, where she's just like, I don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. And Luke, ew. He's well, she never, cutie. she never says ew, but no, like, but, but she cute. just is very like. No, I would never think about Luke that way. She does finally admit it to Emily because the whole episode, Richard and Emily are talking about whether or not they're going to go to Martha's Vineyard because they haven't, like, they didn't rent out their usual house in the right amount of time. But then someone died. And so they're able to rent his house. And then uh, they're like, but he had dreadful taste in furniture. And so Lorelai's like, well, thank God he's dead. And then they call her morbid, even though they've been like talking shit about him the whole time. It's hilarious. That dynamic between the three of them is like uh-huh. some of my favorite shit because she comes by her sense of humor, honestly, and yeah. her like darkness, honestly. And every time she does it in front of them, like just sort of meeting their energy, they're like, Lorelai, I That's never. Yeah. Why would you ever? It's so funny. Mm-hmm. So basically she does admit to Emily because Emily is like, why did you call Luke? So interesting. Like, that's a really, why would you do such a thing? I, you know, admit it, admit it, admit it. And she's like, okay, fine. Maybe I like him. And that's when Emily is like, great. Now that you've admitted it, we can talk about your terrible taste. And it's just like, why? Yeah. And it's just because Lorelai likes something. And so then Emily has to make it bad. Well, okay. I'll give Emily the fact that, like, Luke is certainly not the type of man that they envisioned I guess. for their daughter. But at what point do you stop envisioning people for your daughter? Okay. Um, well, never. But also, at one point, Lorelai, or uh, Emily describes the wedding she imagined for Lorelai. Mm-hmm. And it's beautiful. Oh, I'm sure it is. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. it would be stunning. 
But I mean, you're like, gonna you're gonna like it. Oh yeah, I don't doubt it. Um, <clears throat> but it just seems like as as per their relationship, yeah. because Lorelai likes it, she has to shit on it, sure, and cheapen it and whatever. Yeah. And it's just like you know you like him because you made eyes at him when he brought the ice. Well, and also he shows up for your daughter. Also in the hospital. Yes, with Richard in the hospital. Yes. So, but I think she's only doing it to be contrary. Yeah. For the sake of being contrary, which Probably. is stupid. At least, at least partially. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that is generally the size of this episode. At the very end, uh, Christopher does come back on his motorcycle and. And it's uh, like Lorelai's dream mm-hmm. bike. Yeah. It's like an Indian something. A lot of words. I don't know. Yeah. Um, it also like her fascination with motorcycles really is touch and go. It's like. It's, she just wants whoever's riding. Not she doesn't actually. Yeah, want it's like one. not much after season one. Yeah. does it does it factor in? Um, but basically, she reluctantly asks him to stay for a couple of days with them because he's in town to see his parents, and she also then very reluctantly allows Rory to go on a ride on the motorcycle. Mm-hmm. So, I'm already having a hard time because I named my brother Christopher after Christopher <laughs> Robin. But so one of the nicknames that he had growing up was Christophe. And so <laughs> Christophe. Yeah, every time they said Christopher, I was like, Christophe. <laughs> and this Christopher looked like a Christophe. Yeah. Well, David Sutcliffe is hot as balls. He really, really is. I'll give you that. Yeah. I also, I remember when we watched Under the Tuscan Sun at the very end, he's the writer who's like, come to see oh, her. And yeah. I was like, that's, if we ever do Gilmore Girls, this is Rory's dad. Got it. Yeah. Yep. No, he can get it. Under oh! The- I almost forgot. We got our first sighting of the town oh. troubadour. <laughs> she was very excited the entire time. I love time. him so much. His Applause name is, on his entrance. His name is Grant Lee Phillips. I feel like he's in a band. I think he's fun. They have there's like he has like storylines. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, he's like a thing. It's very fun. I think that's it. Good episode. Yeah. There was a lot to talk about, a lot to unpack. Mm-hmm. And there's some fashion. Lots of indigo. Lots and lots of really good indigo. Really good dark, dark blue purples on, was, on Lorelai especially. That was her entire palette yeah. this entire episode and also Luke. Yeah. Well, but the like the purple sweater, the like purple v-neck sweater she wore at the first Friday night dinner mm-hmm. and then the purple silky thing she wore in the inn, mm-hmm. both of those. Two thumbs up. But the absolute best thing in this episode was Rory's Donna Reed outfit. That was really because. Cool. If I could go, if I could do 50s aesthetic without the politics, I would do it in a heartbeat. Because I love it. Yeah. All right. That is it. We will go watch the next episode, which is Christopher-centric. You absolutely need to come back for the second one because we have more wine We're going to be toastier. <laughs> even toastier. Physically and emotionally. Are you excited? You should be excited. Yay. Okay. Let us know what you think. Like and subscribe. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. That's, That's not this bro. audience. <laughs> Trixie and Catherine. Right, right. Goodbye. Goodbye.